Hi everyone, Martin here from the Open Press project. Today I'm really happy to show you how to start printing with your new press. One of the reasons behind designing them was to be able to do printmaking at home. And that's exactly what we're about to do. We're going to go through setting them up. I'm going to show you the, the materials you need. And I'm going to share some fun techniques that you can do at home. And without further ado, let's jump right in. If you ordered the press with supplies, you're going to get a box that is similar to this. It includes a pack of Avagami editioning papers, some really nice Japanese paper, a quick guide with some helpful tips on how to get started. You will have a little box. We're going to open that in a little bit. You will also have a roller to roll out some ink. And obviously the ink. This is some aqua intaglio ink. And then obviously the main thing, which is the press. It comes fully assembled and ready to go. We're also including a little dry point tool. And you're going to have the two different blankets, the registration grid and the press bed. And we're also including a little area to roll out your ink and some tetra pack to get started. And lastly, in this box, you're going to have some paper hands and a squeegee. We will assemble that later when we need it. And you're also going to get the two table clamps to attach your press to a table. So let's get started with this. I usually use both table clamps to fix my press in place. There's two slots on the side of the press that perfectly fit these clamps. And you can use the four holes on the little feet of the press to screw your press to your working surface. But I think that these clamps do a good job of keeping it in place. Once you've done that, you're going to need to release some pressure by turning these wing bolts counterclockwise to make some room for the press bed that we are inserting now. When you are using the blankets, I highly recommend having them overlap a little bit like this. That's going to make it a lot easier to insert and not have the felt slip on the press bed. If you're having trouble inserting your bed like I have right now, you're just going to release some more pressure and do that again until it works. It is quite important that your press bed is very straight while inserting it, otherwise it'll catch on the side. And I recommend just doing that a couple of times uh, until you get the hang of it. After every print session, you should remove the bed every time and release some pressure to not have permanent stress on the press itself. Let's quickly talk about different kinds of paper. While you can use regular printer's paper for your first tests, I would always recommend going for something more high quality that could start with some nice and thick watercolor paper but especially for all of the intaglio techniques you will have to get some proper etching paper. I personally really like the papers from Avogami. They are uh, Rashi papers. They have a really nice selection but there are tons of other brands uh, for example Somerset, Fabriano or Hahnemühle and all of them have a really wide selection of papers. Now I'm going to show you how I tear them to size. Usually I like to fold them over corner to corner and uh, do that a couple of times. So do that from the front, turn around, do that from the back again. Something like a bone folder can really help with this if you're tearing lots of paper to size. Depending on how thick this paper is, you might need to do this a couple of times and then you can just tear this apart and you have a really nice torn edge. And that's how I prepare most of my paper. 
Now there is a special case with washi paper because the fibers are so long and so strong you might not be able to tear it apart even with the very thin papers and in that case there's a trick to it um, where you fold it over and you briefly go over it with your fingers and then you are using a brush and you wet that edge that you just created and you can just go over this a couple of times. And then you should be able to just pull it apart without the need for lots of creasing. And there you go. You can play around with this and put even more water on the edge to have the edge feather out a bit more. And now we're going to prepare these sheets for intaglio printing. If I'm doing a spontaneous printing session and I haven't prepared paper beforehand, the easiest way to do this is to just put them in a bath of water. Warm water works a bit better than cold water. You're just going to get yourself some container filled with water and dump your paper in it. This needs to soak for a little bit, depending on the paper. I usually wait for like 30 minutes and then it's good to go. You can also prepare this a day before and to save on water you can just use a brush and cover your sheet with that water. Flip it around and do the same thing on the back. And for the thick paper you can really use quite a bit of water, it's gonna really soak it up. I like to store my paper in some Tupperware or some other reusable plastic bag to really let it soak through. Now if you remember you got this piece of plastic which you can transform into two kinds of tools. The first one being paper hands. If you just cut this down the middle and fold it down the middle you then have a little clip, a clipper, to grab your paper when you have inky fingers. So I'm going to demonstrate this right now. Once your paper has soaked for about 30 minutes, you can then pull out these sheets and put them on some kitchen towels, fold it over and squeeze some of the water out. We don't want the paper to be soaking wet, so that's why I'm doing this. It should look dry from the outside, but we're looking for paper that is nice and soft from the water so that it can kind of pull out the ink from intaglio plates. Because we're working with really small plates, you can get away with doing this for multiple sheets of paper because inking up your plates is not going to take ages. If you're working on a really, really big plate on a big press, then you would do this for every print. And again, remember that all of them have to look dry. Here's a comparison of a good one on the left and one that's too wet on the right. Let's briefly talk about different kinds of ink. In this tutorial, I'm using etching ink that is oil-based but water-soluble. This is the Speedball Aqua Intaglio ink and there's another brand called Cranfield. Those are just two of the brands that make ink that behave similar to oil-based inks but can be washed off with just uh, some soap and water which is really nice because you don't need any solvents to clean them up. And as the name suggests, the etching inks are used for all of the intaglio techniques. And on the other side, there are all of the relief printing techniques. And for those, lots of people like to use the water-based inks for lino or block printing. And for those of you who ordered the package with the supplies, you will get this rollout surface that you can use to put down and mix your inks. 
in this next step, I'm going to show you how I use my registration grid and how I approach printing a little edition. Now, first of all, I'm going to cut a piece of paper in the size of the grid. This is going to work as an underlying marking for my plates and paper. So I'm just cutting a piece of paper the size of my grid and I'm afterwards going to mark and find the center of it. And this is just to have a perfect outline of my plate and have that centered on the grid. You can see here how I check kind of my marks and I'm going to go over that with a thicker pen so that I can see that through the registration grid later. Next up is the paper. So I'm kind of tracing that, finding the center of it as well, and mark that with a thicker pen as well. And now I can use these kind of guidelines to print an edition of 10, 20, 50, 100 pins and have the plate centered perfectly on my paper. Here I'm just checking, see if it works. And now it's time to tape the registration grid on my press bed. Now this is really important, make sure that the numbers and the logos are not flipped. That means that you're printing on the correct side of the registration grid. And I'm just using two pieces of tape to tape it to each end of the press bed. And once I've done that, I can slide in the little piece of paper that I just marked underneath it and have my kind of registration all ready to go. And just to show you how this would be set up when printing, you can kind of see that the plate would go on top and I can then register the paper to it, put that exactly on the marking underneath and have both perfectly centered. Now obviously in a printing environment there would be the felt on top and you would run that through the press. And just to show you how this would look like, you can have your paper and your plate is sitting underneath it. Next, we're talking a little bit about different plate sizes. Now, obviously, you can have various sizes of plates depending on what you want to print. And the maximum size of plate kind of depends on the technique you're using. So for all of the intaglio techniques, I wouldn't go for kind of the maximum size of the press, not kind of using the entire press bed for it because the bigger the plate, the more difficult it's going to be to get the right pressure and your plate might slip. Now this doesn't apply for all kinds of relief printing. If you're doing a lino cut, wood cut or something similar, you can use the entire size of the press bed. Now if you chose to use an intaglio technique and your plate is pretty thick, something like this, a two millimeter thick plate can be quite tricky. I would always recommend putting like a really good chamfer on it so the press has an easier time to kind of jump on top of the plate. 